Hi everyone, it's Hannah Ross. Welcome to my channel. Now for my first real video on this channel, I wanted to start off with a banger. And in my opinion, a banger is a minimal makeup collection. I love watching these videos on YouTube. I think they're so informative and I want to show you guys my curated collection. Now this isn't gonna be a normal minimalist makeup collection because I am a makeup lover. I'm a makeup junkie. So this is not a video for people who only wear concealer and fill in their eyebrows. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a beautiful look, but I love makeup and I don't like wearing the same makeup style day in and day out. So I tried to curate a really small collection that packs a punch. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm going to go through each product individually tell you why I love it, talk about some brands that I love in general. And without further ado, let's get into it. So all of my makeup can fit very easily in here. So that gives you a bit of insight into how much makeup I have. But as I go along, I'm going to be filling up this bag. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you guys how much I have in total. So before I hop into the products, I just want to let you guys know that I'm going to be going through my makeup in the order that I put it on my face. To me, that makes the most sense. So we are going to start off with concealer. So this is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I have it in the shade Custard. Oh, this is just such a gorgeous concealer. This is kind of what kicked off my love affair with NARS. I know it is a really hyped up concealer, but it is well worth the hype. It's creamy, it's blendable, it does everything you need, it conceals, it can go under your eyes or on, you know, acne spots or red spots or anything with discoloration. But the best thing about this concealer, in my opinion, is the shade range. I have found other concealers that I like the texture of and I like the application of and they sit well on my skin, but they oxidize or it's just the wrong shade for me. So the reason why I love this concealer and I have purchased it for, I don't know, over five years um, is the shade. The shade Custard for me is a perfect match. So that is the first item going in the bag. So typically I really only like to have one of each type of product. So one concealer, one eyebrow pencil, one mascara, but I actually have two concealers. So I also have the Glossier Stretch Concealer in the shade Medium. <laughs> if you guys know anything about Glossier or your Glossier lovers, you would know that this is very old. Um, I don't use it too, too often, but when I do, it is such a great concealer. It's almost wet looking on the skin in a good way, so it adds a lot of hydration to your under eye area, and that is where I prefer to use it. This concealer I wear on my no makeup makeup day, so if I'm just running to the grocery store and wanna slap on some concealer, this is what I will be wearing. But in the last little while, I've actually found that I'm either just not wearing makeup at all, or I'm going to go for more of a full look. So I don't think that I'm going to repurchase this after it's done. Even though it's a beautiful concealer, I think this might be my last go at the Glossier Stretch Concealer. But that being said, I'm going to use it up, I am going to love it, and I'm certainly not going to discard of it now. In similar fashion, I have the Glossier Cloud Paint Seamless Cheek Color in dusk. So this is also a no makeup makeup product for me. And this is such a gorgeous product. It goes on so easy. It blends out beautifully. It is hassle free and you basically can't mess it up but it's also pigmented enough to look like you're wearing something. Similar to the Glossier Stretch Concealer though, I don't think that I'm going to be repurchasing this product because like I said, it's kind of zero or a hundred for me lately. So I'm either going with no makeup or a full makeup look. So this is one that I'm going to use up and love every time I do, but then not repurchase. The next product that I have to show you guys is arguably the most important one in my entire makeup routine, other than perhaps concealer. Uh, this is the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. This is the product that 
allowed me to not wear foundation. I haven't in years. I didn't on my wedding day. Like I do not wear foundation. I never found that foundation looked good on me. It, it always looked cakey. It never matched properly. I always felt like I was wearing this film. It didn't help my skin. It broke me out. I never found my fit for foundation. But after many years, I finally figured out why I was wearing foundation. And that's because it mattified my skin in areas. And I didn't want to be shiny all over my face. Even though I have dry skin, I still put a lot of nice skincare on and I didn't want my face to look like a disco ball. So I found powder after a long time, longer than I care to admit. I found the loose powder put just in my T-zone and on my chin was enough for me. So I could mattify the areas that were a little bit shiny and then the areas that I wanted to keep dewier, like the tops of my cheekbones, I could just leave them alone. So this was what replaced foundation for me. And I don't like to say never, but I really don't think I'm ever gonna go back to foundation. I think the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder is the one for me and it has replaced foundation forever. But we'll see, hold me accountable in a few years on this YouTube channel. Next up is powders. So I also find a lot of minimalists tend to use cream products. That could be a gross overgeneralization, but I am actually a powder girl. I don't want to get my hands all messy every single time I do my makeup. I love using a brush. There's something about using a brush that makes makeup application very artistic for me. Um, and I like the finish that powders give. I find they're very long lasting and they're just so much easier to apply and they're a little more foolproof for me. So my face products are all powders and the first I'm going to talk about here is actually a blush. This is the NARS Zen blush. It might seem strange to be talking about a blush first because I mentioned that this is the order in which I actually put it on my face, but I do use this blush first and that's because it's so neutral. I almost wear it as you would a transition shade for an eye look. So I almost put it down as a nice diffused base and then I go on top with my next product. So this is the NARS Laguna Bronzer. It's a favorite for a reason. It's just a great bronzer. The shade match is perfect for me. I find it super easy to blend and work into the skin and I really love it. So this is the NARS Laguna Bronzer. Next up is another NARS classic, the Fort de France highlighter. This is a huge pan. It was the only size that was available. I wish that the bronzer was in this large pan and this highlighter was in the smaller bronzer size, but alas, this was all that was available. So this is the Fort de France, like I mentioned, and it is, oh, so gorgeous. It's so beautiful. It's not too pinky. It's not too yellow. It's that perfect champagne color. But best of all, it has not a chunky glitter inside. I hate chunky glitters in my highlighter. I don't know why they still exist. They drive me nuts. This was one of the few highlighters that I knew of from YouTube, thank you YouTube, that did not have chunky glitters in it. So I picked this up for my wedding and I'll probably be using it for my entire life because the pan's so big. So it was a good investment. <laughs> so the next product is actually kind of shocking. Uh, I have two more highlighters and a bronzer. Now, this was a gift, so this is definitely not something that I would have purchased myself, but I really like the product actually, and I certainly am going to keep it because these highlight shades are quite unique. There's a cool toned highlighter and then a yellowy toned one as well, and this is a nice deep bronzer color, so when I'm a little more tan like I am right now, it's actually pretty nice to use this and it can add a lot of depth if I'm doing an eye look as well. So I do really like this trio and I will be keeping it, but this is not something that I would have purchased myself because I have everything that I need, but it's nice to have in my collection for now and I am definitely gonna be using it up. 
So next up, I actually have an eyeshadow palette. Typically, I just use my blush, bronzer, and highlight on my eyes. It makes a really nice cohesive look, and you can use way less products, but I do have an eyeshadow palette. This was one that I purchased for my wedding. I would not have purchased it otherwise, but oh my gosh, I am so grateful that I bought this for my wedding. It is perfect. It has so many different tones and I feel like this has really elevated my makeup looks with just one small palette. I can go for a really deep smoky eye if I stick towards this end or I can go for something that's colorful with this orangey shade or more neutral if I want to. So I find I can do a lot with this. This is the NARS Voyageur eyeshadow palette in copper. This is pretty new, but I would repurchase this again or a similar eyeshadow palette with maybe four or six shades. I love how there's matte along the top and then a corresponding shimmer shade. Just makes the look so easy. And this tiny palette lets me get really, really creative with my eyeshadow. So I love it and I honestly don't know what I would do without it now. The next product is also an interesting pick as a minimalist. This is a liquid eyeshadow. It's Glitter Goals by NYX. <gasps> this I use as an eyeshadow topper and it is amazing. I do not have enough good things to say about this product. It stays, it has fantastic lasting power. It's so easy to apply. There's no fallout. It's cheap, it's like five bucks. This is the perfect shade. This one's called Polished Pinup. It is a champagne tone and it almost has gold and silver reflect. So it goes with cooler tone, it goes with warmer tone makeup. And again, this just adds something so special that I can't get anywhere else in my makeup because I really don't like chunky glitter, like I've mentioned probably 10 times. I thought that I was only gonna use it for my wedding and eventually I would gift it or it would go bad because I'm not using it. Nope, I use it all the time. I love this product. And I would consider repurchasing this after it's done. That's how much I love it. Okay, a boring product, but again, chef's kiss. This is one of the best eyebrow pencils I've ever used in my entire life. And I've used really low end to really high end. This is the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Ash Brown. I didn't even need to look at the shade because I've repurchased this so many times. I know what it is. I love this product. It's a lot stiffer than some other products. So it doesn't deposit as much color right away, which I love. It makes your brows look so much more natural. And again, this shade match is just perfect for me, the ash brown. I find it lasts a really long time and it has a spoolie on the other end. So you really can't go wrong with this one. I highly suggest switching from your Anastasia Beverly Hills, although I love those products, but switching from Anastasia to NYX because these ones are so much cheaper and I actually find they do a little bit better of a job, so. This is the only eyebrow product that I have. Okay, next up would be liquid eyeliners. I have two. So the one that I wanna to talk to you guys about, actually both are worthy of discussion, but for completely different reasons. So I have the NYX Epic Ink Liner. Do I like this liner? Yes. Do I love this liner? No. It's pretty good. It can bleed a little bit, but it's really black and it doesn't smudge too easily. It's a decent liner. But the reason why I really like this is because it's cheap and it lasts so long. So I was an avid user of the tattoo liner from Kat Von D. That was what I repurchased time and time again, but it just got way too expensive. I find with products that you use up, something like mascara or liquid eyeliner, I like to find the best quality, but for the cheapest price. So this is what I landed on and it's pretty good. Epic Ink Liner, I'm wearing it today. Well, obviously I'm wearing all this makeup today, but it looks pretty good. It can get a decently sharp line. And yeah, I like it. It's in the shade black, riveting. So the next one I have to talk about is this Bite Eyeliner. It is so bad that I think I actually might have gotten a defective tube. This is the Bite Upswing Eyeliner in solid black. It's not black, it's not solid, 
it's gray, it's watery, and it's the worst eyeliner I've ever used in my life. So I really do think I could have gotten a defective tube. Now, this was a gift. I would never purchase two liquid eyeliners. Um, I would definitely only have one. I only need black. I know what I like. So this is something that would not be in my collection normally, but it is so bad that I guess you guys are getting a declutter too because I'm, I'm gonna toss this. I can't think of a single person that would want to use this, so I'm gonna toss it. Okay, now next up, I do have some regular eyeliners. I have black and white. These are both by NYX. They are both retractable. I go for retractable everything so that I don't have to have a sharpener. I hate having those sharpener bits all over my makeup bag, and I really don't like owning a sharpener. I don't know why, but I just much prefer the retractable versions, and NYX has really inexpensive, really good quality retractable versions. I also find the formulas a lot less stiff in retractable eyeliners than standard eyeliners, like the wooden ones that you have to sharpen. So I much prefer the retractable version. I have white and black. I mean, that's decently self-explanatory, but basically if I am going for an eye closing look that's a little smokier, deeper, more intense, I would go with the black. If I am needing a brightening, awake, more alive look, I would go with the white eyeliner. So our last product for eyes um, is another bite product. This is the Bite Up Swing Mascara. Now for how bad the eyeliner is, the mascara, is the opposite. It is so good. This is the best mascara I've ever used. So worst eyeliner, but best mascara. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. I adore this mascara. This was a gift and Bite is expensive, but I think I'm gonna go out and buy the full size tube when this is done because it's just that good. I like a volumizing mascara. If I'm going to take the time, effort, and energy to put on mascara, I want it to look like I am wearing mascara. So I prefer lengthening and volumizing, but the mascara has to be easy to take off. That is my number one factor in a mascara. Even if it's the most volumizing mascara of all time, if it is difficult to take off, I'm not purchasing it. And of course, you don't want it to smudge, you don't want it to flake. This does none of that. It is so great. It stays on all day, it holds a curl, it's super black, it's very volumizing, it's easy to take off. And I just love the big fat hourglass wand. It is so good. <laughs> It is so, so good. So Bite Upswing Mascara. This is just in the shade. Doesn't have a shade. It's black though. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Love this mascara. Next up is my favorite category and that is lips. Now, do I think that it's the most impactful or the most important in my makeup routine? No, that is left for the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder and my NARS concealer, okay? but this is the most fun. <laughs> it's the step in my makeup routine that I cannot wait to do, and it just adds that finishing touch to a look. So, I actually have a few lip products to talk about. Typically, I would only have three products for lips in my makeup collection, but right now I have six. So the first four I'm going to show you are lip color, let's say. So I have three liners and one actual lip stick. Now. This Charlotte Tilbury combo was in fact a gift. I love these, but these are not part of my like typical collection. So I'm going to start with the OGs. These are more retractable liners from NYX, but they are retractable lip liners. So I have the shade Nude and Red. I laugh at that because, I mean, how creative is nude and red, but honestly, I prefer it than some of the brands that name their lip products Wild Things or products in general, so I don't even mind it. Nude and red. Nude is my go-to, my everyday, my, my lips but better, and I actually use this as all over color, you guys. That is one of my top tips. You do not need lipsticks if you don't want to. Get a creamy enough lip liner and it can line your lips, it can fill your lips. Get a lip gloss so you can get different finishes, but if you find the right color in a lip liner, you don't need to go out and buy all these lipsticks as well. So I have one in nude, and then I also have this big, bright, bold red color. Every once in a while, I love to bust out a red. There is just something about a red lip and a golden sparkle on 
on the eye with a beautiful eyeliner. I love that look. And I couldn't do a makeup collection without having the red. So I picked one up. I love this one. I already knew the formula was going to be great, but it's a true red. It looks really, really good. Complements my skin tone. And those are my two standard lip liners that I have. All right. So moving on to my last lip liner and the only lipstick I have in my collection. This shade is Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk 2 Medium. It is a bit deeper than the nude NYX shade that I showed you before. So it adds something else to my collection. Same with this lipstick. It is again, the Pillow Talk in 2 Medium and it's a little deeper as well. It's the combo that I'm actually wearing today and it adds kind of this 90s grunge theme that I don't have anywhere else in my lip products. So I've really been enjoying these. I won't repurchase them when they're done because I have more than enough, but I'll definitely use these up. And my last, <laughs> my last category is lip glosses. Okay, you guys, I have two lip glosses and there is a bit of a story behind them. Number one is the NARS Triple X lip gloss. This was clear, but I used it so frequently over reds that it became this you know, pinky color. So this one I purchased quite a while ago, many, many months ago, back when budget wasn't really an issue for makeup. And I think it's really, really nice. I do not think it's worth the money. I actually prefer my second lip gloss, which is the NYX lingerie gloss in clear. Again, with the names, I like it. Basic. Perfect. This one I actually find to have more of a glass-like effect than the NARS. The NARS stays on way longer than the NYX, I find though, but I actually prefer the NYX. I don't like that it's scented. It has a pretty strong vanilla-y scent. Um, the NARS does not have a scent at all, but for the price difference and the fact that this adds more of a shine to my lips, I would definitely suggest buying the NYX Lingerie Gloss if you like lip glosses. The reason why I have a lip gloss is because I find I can either go with the matte look with just the lip liner or add a gloss and it looks completely different. It's such a transformed lip look. So I really enjoy having glosses, but two is way, way, way too much for me. I have to um, simply because I needed to buy a few extra products from NYX to get free shipping. So that's why I have two and I couldn't help myself and I opened it up. So two lip glosses is wild for me. I definitely will just have one in the future. And now you guys, with all that being said, I am going to show you my makeup bag and all the products that I have all together. Ooh. Are you ready? This is it. It's about half full, I would say. Um, there's definitely a lot more room in here, but I don't like my makeup bag to be too full. And I can't wait to bring you guys along on this YouTube channel and see how this makeup collection evolves over the years. Because like I said, this is a lot of products for me and I definitely could do with a little bit of a declutter. So the rain is really coming down now. I feel like someone's telling me that it's time to be done with this video. So this was it. This is my makeup collection. Um, I am really proud of this collection. I obviously have an affinity for the brands NYX and NARS. I really like to invest in high end in some areas like powders and concealers. And I really like to go cheap with anything that's kind of has a shorter life cycle and I find NYX has the best products at the most affordable prices so they are my go-to brand. All right everyone well that is it for today's video that was so much fun to film and I hope you guys got a little bit of inspiration. Um, let me know your favorite minimalist makeup products down below in the comments and if you like this video give it a like if you like my content in general even though this is the first video so if you like this video feel free to subscribe and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Okay. Bye for now. See you later.